Hey everyone and welcome to AMC Movie Talk. Movie Talk for movie fans. I'm Chris Lee Kennedy and this is the show where we bring you the day's biggest movie news and of course we give you insight into what it all means. Joining me as always is AMC Movie News Senior Editor Mr. John Campia. Greetings and salutations everybody. Welcome to our new digs here for AMC Movie Talk at the Stream TV Studios in Hollywood, California. We're going to tell you a lot about our new home in the, in the coming days and just the cool folks here that we're working with now to bring you this show. I am so excited not only for today's show but I'm really excited tomorrow night too for the new episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I really hope it's better than that god awful piece of crap I saw last week. We also have in the studio joining us today AMC's production manager. He's no longer behind our curtain. He's up at the desk now, Mr. Dennis Sang. Hi, guys. I actually liked the, the pilot episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There <sighs> were problems, but I still enjoyed it. <sighs> and we also have joining us the man behind the upcoming film, The Death of Superman Lives. What happened, Mr. John Schnapp? Hey, I, I'm going to wait until there's five episodes <laughs> of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then I'm going to binge on it, and that's what I'm looking forward to. It's a giant, giant sandwich of awesomeness. Hey, folks, listen, before we get rolling uh, on all the movie news today, I just want to make sure and remind you about this upcoming event we've got coming on at uh, AMC Theaters everywhere. On November 7th, of course, the new Thor The Dark World is opening officially on November 8th, but on November 7th, you can go to a select AMC theater and see the Thor Marathon. We are showing start at 2.30 in the afternoon, Thor, The Avengers, and then at 8 p.m., the very first screenings of Thor, The Dark World. We're going to put a link in the description of this video where you can get all the information about which theaters are participating in this and getting your movie tickets for this. I loved the first Thor film. It's my favorite Marvel film aside from The Avengers. So I'm going to be there. I can't wait to be a part of it. I hope you will, too. All right, guys, we're going to get right into the news today. I mean, I had to say, we're in a new studio, so I had to get a new look to Woo! start things off yeah. today. The boys were approving, so <laughs> now we're going to get into the news. Heading towards the end of the year, one of the films that was getting a lot of Oscar buzz was the upcoming Fox Catcher, starring Steve Carell, Channing Tatum, and Mark Ruffalo. The film was scheduled to hit AMC theaters on December 20th, but Sony Pictures Classics has now announced that the film is being pushed back to an undetermined date sometime in 2014 to allow the filmmakers more time to finish the film and obviously removing removing it from Oscar contention this year. Directed by Moneyball and Capote director Bennett Miller, Foxcatcher tells the gripping true story of Olympic wrestling champion brothers Mark Schultz, played by Channing Tatum, and Dave Schultz, played by Mark Ruffalo, and their relationship with the eccentric John DuPont, played by Steve Carell, heir to the DuPont chemical fortune that led to murder. John, how do you feel about Foxcatcher being pushed back into 2014? I'm, I'm completely bummed out by this, to be honest. This is one of these films I have been so looking forward to. Like, first of all, it always sounds interesting. Steve Carell is in all these weird prosthetics and you hear people talking about potential Oscar buzz for the dude, that sounds good. I'm, I'm warming up to Channing Tatum. I used to think any screen time he ever got in any film was a complete waste of screen time. Uh, and then I saw him in 21 Jump Street and it's like, okay, now I'm interested. Mark Ruffalo has always been awesome. Um, so we liked him in everything he's been in, so that's a no-brainer. But the fact that this is getting pushed back, uh, look, on the, on, from an artistic integrity point of view, hey, that's cool if the director says, I want more time to finish it, and the studio says, okay, no problem. That's cool, I respect that. But I've been dying to see this in December. And I've been dying to see what a, a film like this could do in the upcoming Oscar season. So for me, while I, I get it, I, I'm just really, really disappointed that, uh, that we're not gonna get to see it now. Schnepp, what do you think? Well, how, how far did they push it back? They're, it's indeterminate. Sometime in 2014. So it, was, it wasn't like <clears throat> February dumping zone. Yeah, right? no, no. Okay. It, it might be next December for all we know, really. Yeah, I mean, the trailer, which you just clued me on to, so I, I had heard about it, but I didn't realize you could see a trailer. It's a foreign version of the trailer because they pulled it from right. American release. Um, it looks great. It really looks interesting. And, and you know, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, a better performance from Steve Carell. You know, aside from Brick, he's done a couple of other films, and, and Forty Year Old Virgin. There's a, you know, an uneven quality, but that that looks amazing. And Channing Tatum is a great actor. I think he's comedic, funny, amazing. So Dennis, uh, yeah, me and Snap just watched the trailer before, and I, I really I liked it. If if it was a like an unknown director. I'd be a little worried, like, oh my God, something's wrong with the right, movie. Yeah. But it's Bennett Miller. <laughs> yeah. You know, he did Moneyball, which I loved, yeah. and, and Capote, which I really liked. So you, you know, and I actually went to Oakland for the yes. world premiere of Moneyball, yes. where we talked to Brad Pitt and everybody yeah. there. Yeah. And so 
because he's, he's an Oscar nominated director, I'm not worried that it's it's uh, something wrong with the movie. I think it really is what they say it is. They would just want more time with it. So, uh, and I'm looking forward to see uh, seeing Steve Carell do some more dramatic stuff. I think he's actually a really good actor. And Channing Tatum, I never was really down on him because he was in this movie called uh, Guide to Recognizing Your Saints that right. nobody saw, and he was actually really good on that. And the other thing to mention when we're talking about uh, Steve Carell getting some Oscar buzz for something like this, remember too, two of the last couple of movies that this guy has directed, Moneyball and Capote. Yes. The lead actors in both those films got nominated for Academy Awards, and one of them won. Yes. Hoffman actually won it. So that bodes well for Steve Carell. Yes. All right, what do we got next? With Thor The Dark World officially opening in AMC theaters everywhere on November 8th, star Chris Hemsworth is already talking about one of his new upcoming projects called Cyber, being directed by Michael Mann. In a recent interview, Hemsworth described Cyber with the following. I just finished it. It's based in the world of cyber terrorism. Basically, something similar to the Chicago Board of Trade is hacked into and it sets off a chain of events around the world, affecting the stock market. And the code that was used to hack into it, my character had written in years before and he happens to be in prison for cyber crime. He is pulled out and offered a deal if he works with and joins the task force of the FBI and the Chinese government in trying to track this guy down. It starts off in Chicago and ends up in Hong Kong. It's this sort of cat and mouse international heist and thriller. Dennis, how does cyber sound to you so far? Okay, I, I like Michael Mann. I don't love his work. Uh, you know, I really like Collateral. I thought Ollie was good. I, I know a lot of people will find this unpopular. I only liked Heat. I didn't love it. Um, Chris Hemsworth is a, a good actor. Yeah, I haven't seen him in too much besides uh, Thor and a few other things. Uh, but speaking of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., one of the problems <laughs> I had with it was like you had this main character that you just don't believe is this hacker. I don't buy Chris Hemsworth as a hacker. <laughs> and yeah, so this this description just doesn't sit well with me. See, I know a couple of computer hackers, guys who would call themselves computer hackers. They don't look like Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Not at all. They look like more really? like me. <laughs> you know, it's it, yeah, and I'm I'm with you. It just doesn't feel good. And the other thing I don't like it, but look, overall, I do like the sounds of this. I'm interested in this. I think Michael Mann has hit enough films out of the park that we can trust him. Yeah, he has turned in the odd Miami yeah. Vice here and there as well. But, you know, whatever. I like Chris Hemsworth as an actor. But this sounds an awful lot to me like The Rock. And, and I'm not talking about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I'm not talking about the movie The Rock where you got Sean Connery, right? He's the guy who broke out of Alcatraz. So now the government's going back to him, offering him a deal to get him out of prison to help stop the other guys. Yeah. So this is the same thing, right? Chris Hemsworth is the guy who wrote yeah. this code. Now they're using his code, so they go get him out of prison. It sounds a little similar to that, but overall, I still like the sounds of it, Schnepp. When I, when I read the description, I instantly thought of Swordfish with Hugh Jackman <laughs> oh, yeah. doing that, like, a computer hacker is all yeah. like, get a get a get a get a Halle Berry. Right, it's sort of like, really? computer hackers aren't all busting out doing stuff while receiving sexual favors like yeah. I have one minute to break this yeah, that, you know but I'm behind it like I could just see the, the whole China thing is so they could get that billion dollars you know the billion people looks like. <laughs> so the, the, that's why they're doing the whole China thing but it makes sense Michael Mann is an incredible director I mean he's one of my favorites see the keep and that was like mm -hmm. a really bad movie but it's so well directed I mean I, I'm so I'm in I can't wait to see it just to see what he's gonna do with this kind of uh, formulaic thing, so. All right, folks, so listen, we've reached that part of the show for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Chris Lee has a few other items in the world of movie news. She's gonna run them down, and then Dennis Schnepp and I are simply gonna say whether we buy it or sell it. So Chris Lee, what do we got? Dwayne The Rock Johnson has just tweeted out the first picture of actors John Hurt and Joseph Fiennes in the movie Haunted by a Sin from His Past, Hercules Has Become a Mercenary. Along with five faithful companions, he travels ancient Greece selling his services for gold and using his legendary reputation to intimidate enemies. But when the benevolent ruler of Thrace and his daughter seek Hercules' help to defeat a savage and ter terrifying warlord, Hercules finds that in order for good to triumph and justice to prevail, he must again become the hero he once was. Isn't that sweet? He must <laughs> embrace his own myth. He must be Hercules. John Byers sell this image of hurt and finds. Uh, you know what? I'm going to buy this, and I'm actually warming up to the idea of Hercules more and more. Yes, Brett Ratner's directing it, but as we've talked, I think Ratner gets a little bit of a bad rep. Do I think he's one of the world's greatest directors? No, I do not. But I like the work he did in Tower Heist. I really did. I loved Rush Hour 2, and I don't think 
the entirety of X-Men 3 is his blame only. Remember, he walked into that film very, very late in the game, so a lot of it was already set in stone. And you know what, I'm growing, this is growing on me. I thought it was a stupid sounding idea at first, but it's growing on me, for me it's a buy. Dennis? Yeah, I buy it as well. I, I thought it was gonna be maybe something more comedic or something like this when I heard yeah. The Rock was gonna be Hercules, but <laughs> with with actors like uh, John Hurt yeah. and Joseph Fiennes, like, those are top notch actors. Yeah. And we've seen, the Rock kind of developed more. I mean, I didn't love Pain and Gain, but he was good in that. He was good in Snitch. Yeah. So, I, I think this is going to be a lot better than than people are expecting. Schnepp, I got to buy it too. I think uh, it's starting to have that flavor of Conan, but without <laughs> the magic, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan. And right. I I'm looking forward to seeing The Rock play like a a Hercule a real Hercules with a gang of mercenaries, and then they have to bust this kingdom down. So, yeah. and I want to throw in too for, for anybody who has not seen, so we're talking about Joseph Fiennes, who is of course Ray, Ray Fiennes' brother. What a there's a lot of talent in that family. Um, if you haven't seen The Merchant of Venice, I know I bring this film up every once in a while, but The Merchant of Venice with uh, Al Pacino playing Shylock, Joseph Fiennes is in that. One of the best performances I've ever seen him give. He's fantastic in that. All right, what's next? Well, you always buy The Rock. Just, just let me always go with that. Always buy The Rock. Always buy The Rock. District 9 and Elysium directors Neil Blomkamp's next film, Chappie, is set to hit AMC theaters on March 27, 2015, and stars frequent Blomkamp collaborator Char Charlto Copley. It now appears we have a new cast member as Wolverine star Hugh Jackman has revealed that he will be appearing in the film as well. Jackman can currently be seen at AMC theaters in, mo in the movie Prisoners, which is getting him some early Oscar buzz. So Schnepp, buy or sell Hugh Jackman joining Chappie. Uh, I, uh, I'm gonna buy it as long as he's playing like a computer hacker and he's like in the future. Um, no, it's, it's a great addition. Hugh Jackman is like one of my favorite actors. Any, anything he, he's in, he always adds flavor to it. Even if the movie itself I don't like, he's good in it. So I think it's great. I don't know if he's gonna be like chasing down um, the, the uh, die ant word, if he's gonna like be helping the robot chappy out, but I'm, I'm a thousand percent in, I'm in. Buy Dennis? Him. Uh, yeah, I, I buy it. I mean, Hugh Jackman's fantastic. Swordfish, not standing. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he Prisoners was great. I saw it, uh, I think, a week ago, and I, I thought he delivered a fantastic performance. So adding that him to uh, a director that I like, uh, I, I think it's a win. Yeah, I gotta buy this as well. You're getting an actor of the caliber of, of Jackman, who I thought actually should have won. Personally, I thought he should have won the Oscar last year for mm -hmm. his role in Les Mis playing um, uh, Jean Valjean. I thought he was fantastic in that. I'm still not sold on the movie as a whole, though. Um, you know, I was I was really big on Neil Blomkamp like everybody else after District 9. I wasn't really, I didn't like Elysium. Didn't hate it, but I was disappointed by it. This third film will give us, I think, a better indication about where his career is going. But adding Jackman is not a mistake. I hope it's still in the Elysium <laughs> District 9 world. I loved Elysium just as much as I liked District 9. I loved District 9, so I want that world to continue. So. All right, what do we got next? Director Michael Bay has just tweeted out our first official look at the cast of the upcoming Transformers Age of Extinction, showing us Mark Wahlberg, Nicola Peltz, and Jack Renner. Not much is currently known about the new film other than it will feature the popular characters, the Dinobots. Dennis, buy or sell Bay giving us our first look at the cast. Uh, I'm gonna have to sell this. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to Transformers 4. And this picture of the cast is like, it's almost kind of pointless. No one watches Transformers for the cast of people. They're watching the giant robots fighting. And, Unless and Megan Fox is bent over the hood of that, some car that, that is she's true. fixing. Yes. And um, uh, I like Mark Wahlberg. Uh, what's her name? Nicola Peltz. Yeah. The last thing I saw was The Last Airbender, which is a disaster <laughs> of a movie. I didn't even recognize her in Neither that picture. Did I. I was like, oh, wow, this girl's grown up a lot. So, mm. yeah, it's a sell for me. Schnepp? Uh, I gotta buy it because, guys, they're actually showing you one of the Dinobots. That's the pterodactyl. That's the gas station. It turns into a pterodactyl and flies away. I'm buying it just because those guys are going to sell it. So. Um, you know what? I'm going to, to buy the picture uh, just because I think it's, it's kind of a cool... Giving us our first look is always cool. Now, everybody knows I hated... Transformers 2. I did not like Transformers 3. I'm a big fan of the first Transformers, and so I've been skeptical, but you know what? I have no rational explanation for this, and I cannot justify this, but for some reason, I'm starting to get a good feeling about Transformers 4. I can't Sucka. justify no. that, maybe. Sucka. I'm being sucked in again no, by Michael Bay. I'm with you, though. It's, Damn. It's, but it's Wahlberg and Michael Bay. Pain and Gain was great. That's why yeah, he grabbed I liked him. Yeah, I Pain and Gain. So they have some kind of chemistry going on, 
add robot dinosaurs, it's going to be retarded awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. All right, what's next? It's one word, Dinobots. Dinobots. That gets you really excited. We have an official release date for the upcoming sequel, Horrible Bosses 2. Apparently not fearing Katniss and the Hunger Games at all, Horrible Bosses 2 will hit AMC theaters everywhere on November 26, 2014, just five days after the opening of The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. Horrible Bosses 2 will be directed by Sex Drive director Sean Anders and will once again star Jason Bateman, Charlie Day, and Jason Sudeikis. John, buy or sell the release date for Horrible Bosses 2. Uh, I buy it. I was a little bit afraid, actually, that they might push this to 2015. I really liked Horrible Bosses. I know not everybody liked it as much as I did, but I thought it was absolutely hilarious. It's one of those films that I came out of it thinking everybody was going to love it and was kind of surprised when people didn't. But I thought it was great, I, and I think it's really a bold move to put it that close to Hunger Games, because Hunger Games is going to be a box office monster. But Horrible Bosses 2 probably be an R-rated comedy, probably target a, a slightly different thing. And look, as far as Anders goes as a director, I really like Sex Drive. I thought that was a really funny, original, cute film, so I'm really curious to see what he does with Horrible Bosses 2. For me, it's a buy. Dennis? Yeah, I buy it as well, despite not liking Horrible Bosses that much. <laughs> You're one of those guys. I, yeah, I mean, I didn't. it wasn't bad. I just right. didn't find it as funny as everyone else did. But uh, I, I, I like Sex Drive as well. I thought it was one of those movies that got underrated because yeah. of the title. And it didn't have any big, huge stars in and it. And not a lot well. of marketing. And, yeah. yeah. So, and, and going up against uh, Hunger Games, that's not really a big deal. I mean, it's totally different audience. So I, I, I buy that release date. Shep? I'm going to sell it. I don't like horrible bosses. So I'm not excited about a sequel. I like We're the Millers. 8,000 times Oh, I love that too. Yeah. Horrible Bosses. And Sudeikis is a funny actor. I think Aniston, yeah, Aniston. I don't know if she's going to be in Horrible Bosses too. No, I, I, so. don't, I don't think yeah, she is. I haven't heard. Oh, I, know, I know that um, uh, Jamie Foxx is coming back as Mother Effort Jones, which is one of the greatest <laughs> names in, in Are they going to get Colin Farrell with his comb over back? I hope know? so. I mean, that, that was, was, the, that was the, really <laughs> the only part I laughed at. I was like, hey, that's a pretty funny comb over. The rest of it was like, <laughs> if he's not so, too busy filming World of Warcraft, then I heard Total maybe Recall he will. too. That's what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know. All right, folks. Listen, we've reached that part of the show called Mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you would like us to address on air, you can email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Now, every day we pull a couple questions out of the mailbag to address on the show. Chrisley's got a few of them pulled out right now. So, Chrisley, what do we got? Mr. DJS writes, I love the show and I've met an avid AMC akin for a while <laughs> who that. loves my daily updates. I like that. On the, the 29th of September, you said that the new Bond was inspired by the Bourne movie style of spy action. I paraphrase. Could there ever be a crossover? Would either side initiate this? Who could write or direct it regardless of possibility? Use your imagination. Give us your thoughts. Thank you all and keep on jamming. <laughs> it's an interesting question because, and, and, you know, let me clarify this. When I say that um, on the show that the new Bond is influenced by uh, Bourne, obviously it's not copying Bourne. It's just like, oh, that d little darker, little grittier, that's where we see the, the new Bond films going, which is great. Obviously, Bourne was completely influenced by Bond and all that kind of stuff. I don't think we will ever see something like this. Uh, um, uh, you know, a merger film like this, Born and Bond together for the first time. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, obviously, you got different studios at work here, so that kind of makes it an impossibility even to start with right out of the gate. But on top of that, these are two alpha characters. And while it may work in something like Avengers, these char those characters were made to function together on the big screen. I don't think this would work. And while we say that Bond is kind of influenced by the new direction of Born. I don't know that their styles would work together on the same movie. It's great for fan fiction. It's great to theorize about. It would be kind of fun. But for those reasons and others, I don't think it would work. Schnepp, what do you think? Could we see a Bond born movie? Uh, I can see like born, Jason born. <laughs> like, I don't see it because born stems more from a reality perspective of spies, and Bond has always had a little bit more flair. It's always like, even the new ones are super villain of the of the of yeah. The, everyone has a I'm gonna destroy the world even if if it's uh, Javier Bardem for a specific reason right like for revenge on one person, uh, you know I, I they're so different even though they involve spies a completely different kind of franchise it 
it would just it wouldn't make sense for either studios to be like let's combine them. It doesn't make sense to me. Dennis? Yeah, I think from a Bo the Bourne stamp standpoint, Bourne is supposed to be realistic. So you're taking an iconic character like Bond and putting that in, it just doesn't work. I think the other way around, you know, Bond having Bourne isn't that bad idea, but I don't think the Bourne franchise would have anything to do with the Bond franchise, you know. And and, and neither franchise really needs that crossover. I don't think it's going to add anything money-wise to it as well. You just brought up the biggest point to me, I, and I think you're bang on the money. People who went to go, look, Bond, the last Bond film made more money than any Bond in history, right? So how many more people are gonna go see it? It's the same argument I hear with people say, oh, if you added Spider-Man yeah. to the Avengers, it'll make $4 billion. It's like, no, it won't. It's basic math, folks. Think about this for a second. How many people do you know that saw Spider-Man didn't already see Avengers? It's the same audience. Adding Spider-Man to the Avengers is not gonna increase its box office by one bit. In the same way, you might have a little bit more success for Bourne if you add a Bond to it, but I don't see the advantage box office wise for Bond, so I, I think that's a great point. All right, Chris Lee, what's next? Leo Mujica writes, hey AMC Movie Talk, love your show. Keep the movie news coming. <laughs> I have noticed that of all the major movie studios, Universal is the only one without any superhero properties from the big two, DC or Marvel. My question is, since WB owns all of the DC properties, should they sell the film rights to some of their characters to Universal? I know WB would never sell the rights to their big name characters, but what about some of their lesser known properties? Would Universal even be interested interested in buying them. What are your thoughts? Um, you know what, it's it's a really good question because you're right, Universal is one of these major studios that is not in the superhero game. Uh, and they should be, and they should try to find a way. Marvel is no longer, seems to be in the business of selling the rights to their characters. They're more in the business now of trying to reacquire the rights to their characters since they got Daredevil back, and I think they got Ghost Rider back from Sony. I'm not 100% sure about that. Oh, they did. Yeah. Whether they're not gonna, they're gonna do anything with these characters in the future, I don't really know yet. But here's the thing. DC now has a plan. For the first time in 10 years, they actually seem to have a plan about where they want to go with the universe, right? So who are they going to be willing to sell? Are they going to be willing to sell off the rights to Green Lantern? I don't think so. Are they going to be willing to sell off the rights to Wonder Woman? I really don't think so. Are they going to be willing to sell off Superman? Not a chance in hell. So what are, who are they going to be willing to sell? Eh, Huntress. Okay, they're willing to sell off Huntress. Is Universal really <laughs> going to be interested in putting up the money to buy the rights and produce a feature-length series on Huntress? It, it just... In theory, it's great because I'd like to see more studios have these properties. But studios, well, they're not in the business of trying to screw each other over completely all the time. They're also not in the business of, hey, how can I help that other guy out? How can we help Universal? They need a superhero yeah. property. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's give them Martian Manhunter or something. I just don't see it happening. Dennis, am I wrong? Could, could something like that happen? No, I don't see it because even though Universal probably wants to get in the superhero game because it seems very, very profitable, uh, DC is not going, even the lesser characters, they're not going to sell them. Because if you think about Marvel, the reason why some of their characters are, are at other studios is because Marvel at a time was, they were going bankrupt. bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, they were going bankrupt. And they were selling off their properties dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. And this was before like, any of the movies had hit really big. And they would have loved to never have done that. They yeah. would have loved to have just kept everything. And that all the Marvel movies were actually Marvel Studio movies. And that's why we see X-Men at Fox. That's why yes. we see Fantastic Four at Fox. Why we see Spider-Man at Sony, oh, they, that they're, era. They're, and they're praying for like something to happen where they, they can get those properties yes, please back. Please let Sony go out of business. Exactly. Yeah. Shep? I think it's, <clears throat> it would be advantageous for Warner Brothers DC to let do some kind of a joint venture with Universal. Because what you just mentioned, Next year, we're going to have an X-Men movie. We're going to have a Fantastic Four movie. We're going to have Avengers. We're going to have Spider-Man. It's because all these different studios have the rights to Marvel characters. So right. we, as fans, get to see eight Marvel movies next year, and we have to wait two years to see one DC movie. Right. So maybe DC would get it, or, or Warner Brothers would like do a split thing. We'll split the money. Here's the Creeper and Dr. Fate and Sandman. Bust out. You know? Like, give them a... Not the top tier, because you're going to do Justice League, right. keep all those guys and their ancillary villains, but DC Universe is vast, and there's a lot of characters that can be isolated and have their own little universe at Universal. Let me ask you this question. You're the president, CEO, head honcho of Universal Pictures. Are you willing to put up a bunch of money and enter into a deal like that for Sandman? Yes. You are? Without a doubt. Okay. 
So you think it could be a box office hit? Sandman would be an incredible hit, <clears throat> and it's like legions of fans. All right. Well, listen, folks, that will do it for us. We've run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank, first of all, those people who are with me today, sitting to my immediate right, the one and the only Mr. Dennis Zen. Dennis, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, at Think Hero, and you can find me on Facebook, my name. The one and the only Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? Uh, <clears throat> just Twitter and Instagram at John Schnepp, and uh, that's where I'm at. And the purple-headed goddess today, <laughs> Miss Chris Lee Kennedy. Chris Lee, where can people find you online? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Chris Lee. Tell us what you think about the studio and, of course, the hair. And we will tell you in the coming days more about this great studio here that we're now functioning out of the Stream TV here in Hollywood, California. My name's John Campia. You can find me on social media just about anywhere at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. Listen, the most important part of our show is absolutely not what we have to say. It's what you have to say. Make sure you jump on down to the comments section below. Leave your thoughts on any or all the topics we discussed here today. Thanks so much for joining us. My name's John Campia for AMC Movie News. And until next time, bye-bye. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to AMC Movie News on YouTube. It's free and a great way to stay updated with all the latest movie news and check out our daily show, AMC Movie Talk. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter to stay in the loop for our special prizes, giveaways, and contests.